Hey guys, welcome to my channel here at Nanny Northern Prepper. September is National Preparedness Month, and I have a recipe for you today that is a recipe for national preparedness for food safety. The recipe includes National Preparedness Month. It's there to remind us of food safety in our emergency uh, preparedness plans. We need to have a strategy and resources to give us peace of mind, right? If it comes to um, some emer emergency events happening. So, take proactive measures to have uh, safe food and water available, uh, storing emergency supplies, practicing proper hygiene and sanitation, and following appropriate food handling and preparedness techniques. So, what types of food should we include in our emergency kit? Well, when preparing for a disaster, you'll want to build an emergency kit that includes food and water, and don't forget the can opener, okay? While stocking up, purchase foods that have a long storage life, require little or no cooking or refrigeration in case utilities are disrupted. Next, you're going to meet the needs of infants or other family members with special diets. And don't forget your pets. Meet your pet's needs as well. So build up your emergency pantry over time when uh, grocery shopping to make the uh, task easier. Some examples of foods to include are going to be ready-to-eat canned meats, fruits and vegetables, uh, proteins or fruit bars, dry cereal or granola and dried fruit, peanut butter, canned juices, and non-perishable pasteurized milk. Consider how you will cook during an emergency and add alternative heating. Candle warmers, uh, fondue pots, charcoal grills, and camp stoves that you use outside, of course. And how do I store food so that it lasts? Uh, Disaster emergencies can disrupt the supply chain and provide access to fresh food along the way to keep it safe. How you store your food can help it give a longer shelf life. Store items in a cool, dry place away from direct sunlight. Place them on high shelves to keep them safe from minor household flooding. Consider airtight and waterproof containers for foods. They come in paper boxes or cartons to keep out insects or rodents. Check expiration dates on canned foods and dry mixes. Store fresh foods away from ranges or refrigerators. Exhaust. Heat causes foods to spoil more rapidly. What are some dangers during a power outage? Well, managing food supplies without power to ensure proper food storage, refrigerated or frozen foods must be kept below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. During a power outage, food safety becomes a concern due to the risk of bacterial growth and potential foodborne illnesses without a means to keep food cold. During a power outage, follow these five tips to keep your food safe longer. Keep refrigerated and freezer doors closed as much as possible. An unopened refrigerator can maintain its temperature for up to four hours, while a freezer unopened can stay cold for approximately 48 hours. Sorry that. Um, Pack refrigerated and freezer items close uh, together. Um, that will help them maintain their temperature for longer. However, be aware of uh, separating ready-to-eat foods from raw meats, poultry, and seafood. Freezer 
containers of water in advance to help prolong the coldness of the freezer. You know, if you have a milk jug, fill it up, or, uh, you know, water bottles, or pop bottles, two liters, you know, freeze the water up, and, you know, you have a nice solid chunk of ice that will help as well. Um, so if the power outage lasts for an extended period of time, the temperature rises above 40 degrees Fahrenheit, it is recommended to discard the food. So what steps should you take after disaster, right? After a disaster, some foods can spoil quickly, uh, throw, them, throw them away. Perishable foods that has not been refrigerated or frozen properly due to power outages, food that may have been in flood water or storm water, food with an unusual uh, odor, color, or texture. Um, you may be able to salvage food in cans or plastic or metal pouches by taking the following actions. Brush or wipe away the dirt or silt. Wash cans and pouches with hot soapy water. Use food in cans or pouches as soon as possible. The best rule of thumb is when in doubt, toss it out. Um, we understand, you know, that throwing away food after a disaster might cause a financial strain for some when resources are already scarce if this happens. You know, um, FEMA Disaster Recovery Centers can help you find food sources in your community. There you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it gave you some useful information during September Preparedness Month and my child is stay safe out there and not get sick with any uh, thing wrong with your food, you know. So, anyway, guys, until next time, to live. God bless. See you in the next one. Bye.